Welcome to the Cooking Without Looking TV show weekend edition. Yeah? Yeah, hi, I'm Annette Watkins, and we're doing the show for the first time on the weekend, so we're going to ask you guys just to kick back and enjoy some of these new recipes that you can try this weekend. Alan? Our recipes today include uh, some Mexican street corn chicken. And mm -hmm. Annette, you're making your delicious chocolate peanut butter tofu pudding, right? Tofu. Tofu. Oh, excuse <laughs> my pronunciation. I think that's so cute, though. Yeah, that's the first time I heard that. But yeah, it is tofu, and it can be used for many, many things. I'll be making that pudding today, and because we're in South Florida, and we're celebrating going into summer soon, uh, it's hot. We don't want to turn on the stove too much, so I thought this pudding would be great. But before, uh, first of all, I want to show you my font here. I kind of rewrote some of my script. It's like a 2024 font on this. So excuse me if I'm putting my glasses on. Actually, 24 font becomes comfortable with the glasses. But I'd like to say, too, that before we get started um, with the show, we want to remind yourself, we want to remind everyone that everyone on the show, um, it, it, our guests and Alan and I were both visually impaired and we have blind people come on and cook, which you'll see one of our um, people today, Jessica, who has, uh, she'll tell us more about her issue with her eyes. Alan? Uh, yes. So with that, let's welcome Jessica Clay. Jessica, thank you for joining us on the Cooking Without Looking TV show. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah, great, Jessica. We know that you're on Facebook and you present as a blind baker. That is so interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about that and also about your blindness? Sure. Uh, I am on Facebook. You can find me under The Blind Baker. And uh, the logo looks just like what I have here on my apron. Mm -hmm. um, I started the page. I the logo. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. Can you tell us what the logo is for those that can't see and describe? Please, yes, I can't see sure. it either. <laughs> sure. My cousin, he actually drew a cartoon character of me. So it's a cartoon of myself, a headshot, my glasses, and in the glasses it says the blind baker. Uh -huh. Okay, that's kind of cool. Some humor so, in there, I like that. I started the Facebook page. Um, I was not born blind. I was born as a sighted person. And I've always loved to cook and bake. I, I love to feed people. And cooking is one of my passions. And I decided that when I lost my sight, I wasn't going to let it stop me from doing what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And people are always asking me, how did you make this? Can I have the recipe? And so I decided, you know what? I'm just going to start a Facebook page and take pictures of what I make and create and put the recipes out there for people to enjoy. That's exciting. Why did you choose baking? And also, I want to backtrack a little bit on your eyesight. What made you lose your eyesight, eyesight completely because you were not born blind? So we got to go back track on that a little bit. Sure. Uh, about 10 years ago, I started losing my eyesight due to diabetic retinopathy. And unfortunately, I was having a lot of health issues. And it's one of those situations where once you open Pandora's box, mm -hmm. you got to, it, it just keeps coming at you. So at the time they did want to do a retinopic correction surgery on my eyes, but my health was so bad that I probably would not have survived on the operating table. Mm -hmm. So I had to get myself healthy. Um, you know, I am, I am a diabetic, so I had to get that A1C in check. And mm -hmm. by the time I was healthy enough to sustain the surgery, the ophthalmologist told me I had a 50-50 shot at retaining what vision I did have. Mm -hmm. So I did, it was voluntary. I did opt to have the surgery and 
He said everything connected beautifully, but my sight just never came back. And that was mm -hmm. about four years ago. Wow. Wow. That must have been very difficult for you. Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. Very humbling because I am very independent. And one of the hardest things for me to do is ask people for help. But I had to. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's learning experience I, I learn something new every day right exactly and you have a good attitude and you yeah. have a great sense of humor and a great personality very very impressive so Thank what did you. you pick the baking I've always just I've loved to bake it was something that I used to do with my mom growing up uh she had me in the kitchen early teaching me how to make things it was a way for us to bond together especially at Christmas time we were that house that had seven or eight different kinds of cookies and mm -hmm. just every you know she always allowed me to have a creative outlet if I wanted to try a recipe okay sure go for it you know mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. she wanted no problem and as I got older it's I've found it's just a stress release it's a creative outlet and a stress release and the payoff for me is I get to feed people and I love watching people enjoy my food. Mm -hmm. It's right. one of my greatest joys in life is seeing people enjoy my food. Right. They must make some wonderful comments and compliments to your food or your, your bakes, baked goods actually. Cause when you have a good baked good, it's hard to keep quiet, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, oh my God. It's so good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're excited today to see, or to, for those that can't see literally, I didn't mean to use that phrase, but to experience your uh, descriptive recipe today. So describe today you're not baking for us, so you're making something with chicken and corn. So why don't you go ahead and describe that and start your recipe and, and let us know what you're doing at each step of the way and uh, keep it fun. Sure. Uh, actually, I am baking today, but we're going oh. savory instead of sweet. Uh, okay. So this is a baked Mexican street corn chicken. And I chose this recipe for a couple reasons. Uh, here in California, we have lots of produce, fruits and veggies that are coming into season, especially corn. Uh, summertime, we can get a lot of fresh corn. So that's a great way, this is a great recipe to use that fresh corn and Cinco de Mayo is also coming for those that choose to partake. Yes, so it, is. it kind of follows along those lines. So this recipe feeds four. It's very forgiving and you can also stretch it if you need to feed more people. So I'm starting off with boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Um, these are thin cut. That's what my grocery store had available when we went shopping. So they're a little thinner than usual, but like I said, that's okay. Stretches further, makes more meals. Mm -hmm. And I like to rinse my chicken breasts under cold running water once I get them home from the store. And then I make sure that I pat them dry. Why is that? Mm. They have, uh, I guess you could say juice on them. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little sticky. I don't like the texture. And I just want to make sure that I'm, especially with chicken, I'm cooking with the cleanest surface and ingredients as possible. Oh, good. Yeah, because it is kind of slimy. And like you said, you know, being that you can't see your tactile in your hands, you feel it and you know when it feels cleaner. So I that's agree a good with you, Jessica. That's the way I do chicken at home here, too. It just cuts down on the contaminants, I, I think. Personally. I think it does, too. It's a good safety tip, definitely. Yes. So I've prepared a 9 by 13 baking dish here. I've sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray. And I'm just going to go in with some salt and pepper, just regular salt and pepper. Sprinkle it on both sides of my chicken. And then I'm going to flip those over okay. and Maybe. spring the other side. Okay. 
You've mixed the salt and pepper together, I gather, correct? I have, yes. Okay. I have. I, it looks to me like you're dipping that out of a little uh, ramekin of some sort. Mm hmm That's okay. correct. I have my little... Good way to do it. Doing it by hand so you know just exactly how much you're getting. Exactly. You never know whether that salt shaker is putting out a little or a lot, huh? <laughs> and also, when you're dealing with raw meat, it also helps on the contaminants, so I'm not touching all of my spices in my spice cupboard with a hand that has just handled raw meat. Good. Mm -hmm. yes. So I'm going to go in now with a little bit of onion powder. If you don't like onion powder, you can use garlic powder. Or if you don't like either, you can leave them both out. Um, like I said. You can use them both if you want. <laughs> absolutely, you can. Um, this recipe is very forgiving and you can kind of customize it and make it your own with whatever seasonings you like. So I have my chicken powder on the chicken breasts and then I'm gonna just arrange them as you can see in one single layer. So here comes the fun part for all of the street corn. If you're curious about that, I'm going to dump into my bowl two cups of whole kernel corn, which I've measured. You can use fresh if you have that available. You can use frozen. Or if you only have access to canned, that works too. Whatever you have available. So I dump that into my bowl. And then I'm going to add in one cup of just regular sour cream. You could use light if you wanted to. Do you want to cut down on the calories? I would not recommend using fat-free. It's a little too watery. Mm. Good point. And then we have our sour cream. You're going to add in half a cup of mayonnaise. And I just use regular Best Foods mayonnaise uh, east of the Rockies. I believe you guys call it Hellman's. Mm -hmm. Yes. I sometimes use something called Miracle Whip. It's not um, It's not real mayonnaise. I think there's something else in it, but I kind of like it on sandwiches. Does that work in there too? I don't know, Alan. That's not allowed into my house. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's a bad word in this house. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just combine that sour cream, the mayonnaise, and the corn. Get it all mixed in. And like I said, this recipe is really easy very forgiving, stretches nicely. So you've got that mixed and then you just bring your chicken over that you seasoned up and you dump that mixture right over the top. The whole thing over the top of the chicken oh. and then nine by 12 pan oh. was it? I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, so you dump the whole container of corn with the mayonnaise and the and the sour cream over the top of the chicken. That's, that's correct. Already in the pan, correct? That's nine correct. nine by twelve pan. I gather that's about what two three inch deep baking pan, regular baking pan, two inch. Correct. Yeah. So I just take my spoon and try and spread it out as evenly as I can. I know that being visually impaired, one of the tips I could use in the kitchen, clean hands at all times, because I use my hand, my hands are my best tool. So I can feel with them, can check for doneness, just touching things. I always make sure I have clean hands. I use Lots my of... fingers and my nose more than anything else in my kitchen. <laughs> Lots of hand washing. So we have the corn, spread over the chicken in an even layer, just like so. I'm gonna come in here with some mild red chili powder. Now, as I said, you can customize this recipe. 
kind of choose your own adventure. If you like it spicy, use some hot chili powder. You can use whatever you like. I'm going mild here. We don't really have a lot of spice lovers in this house. I love spice, but where I am currently, my body does not love spice. So it's mild. So your chicken is gonna go into a preheated 353 oven. And that's gonna bake for about 45 minutes, depending on the thickness of your chicken. You just wanna make sure that, that chicken registers 165 degrees. Mm. And, and once it's done, you're gonna serve it. Put some of that corn on top of the chicken. And I like to serve mine with some fresh lime. You could serve it with your favorite hot sauce if that's what you're into. And for a little pop of color, I like to go in with some sliced green onions. And then our Mexican queso fresco. Mm -hmm. And this meal would round out quite nicely with some Spanish rice or beans or both. And well, you could okay. well, 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 slow down just a second. What was that last thing you sprinkled on there? That was the queso fresco. And that is exactly what I'm not a real it's shower. it's fresh Mexican <laughs> cheese, pretty easy to find in oh. most grocery stores. It also goes by the name of Cotija, C O T I J A. Okay, but it's a it's a cheese. It is a cheese, yes. It's a fresh okay. cheese. Okay. And I personally like to serve my chicken with just a nice warm, either flour or corn tortilla. So here's the finished product. Um, can you tip the plate a little bit towards your camera? I don't want you to have it slide off on the floor, but yeah, right. <laughs> can we see it a little bit better? There we go. Is that your husband, Brian, over there helping out? That's him. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Oh, yes. Can our audience all see that, the sighted part of our audience? I keep asking our producer for smell yes. of it. I bet yes. it smells really good. I can smell it over here in Georgia. It looks wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining the smell over here, just the fact <laughs> that you know, and the sour cream and all that baking with the cheese. I'm sure oh, that's wow. I wish you guys were here because lunch is served <laughs> or dinner in your case. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, are there any questions or comments from any of the people out in our audience today? Well, it's you guys, um, it's you yeah. guys in our audience that seem to make our show and that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not at this point. Um, it's, it looks like it doesn't. We don't have anyone, but um, Jessica, what? Um, how do you store it? Do you? Um, is that something you can stick in the freezer, make ahead of time? What? What do you do? Before or after cooking? After. After cooking. Okay. Uh, what I like to do for for cooking for leftovers, I would just. Put it in a Tupperware or a Gladware container, something with an airtight seal on it, and make sure you eat it within four to five days of the day that you created it. But it does reheat in the microwave quite well. Does it taste even better a couple of days later? Right, and the flavors vary. Like stew and chili. Yeah. I, I haven't ever had it last four to five days. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's good news. <laughs> That's usually, very good. Usually, because we're we're a household of two uh, adults, um, we get a dinner, two dinners out of it when I cook, or a dinner and lunch for both of us the next day. Nice, nice. I have a question. Yes. Yeah, Jessica. I noticed I might have missed this, but before you put the chicken down in in the the pan. Did you put any parchment paper or you're just going to 
you know, soak it and then you'll clean the, the pan later. Some people like to use the parchment paper to keep cleaning a lot easier. You could definitely use parchment paper. I just prepared mine with some nonstick cooking spray. It's okay. not be anything that causes too much of a mess. Uh, the cheese goes onto the dish afterwards. So there's not any baked or sticky cheese on it to clean off later. So it cleans up that's, pretty easy. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jessica. That's amazing. Do you have anything else you'd like to add about your recipe or about your visual impairment or anything else about your baking uh, web or on the Facebook? Anything you want to say about anything? We'd love to hear more from you. Sure. I would just advise people if you're interested in learning more about um, my experience with visual impairment or finding some great, tasty, delicious recipes or some comic relief, come on over to Facebook and follow me on The Blind Baker. Oh, excellent. We definitely will. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank Appreciate you. that. And we will be trying your recipe. I hope people out there will try it too. Make a point to try this delicious dish. All right, Annette. Who is now that? Now it's your Where? turn. Tell us about your recipe. Oh, well, I want to give kudos to Jessica on her delicious recipe. But being a vegan, I'm all about veganizing every dish that I hear. And I'm listening to her dish and I'm like, whoa, I know millions of people that would love that. But I would take that same dish and I would veganize it using tofu and using organic corn and using... Um, organic um, vegan sour cream and vegan mayonnaise. It could be done very simply. More and more people are doing what we call veganized. But today I'm going to take tofu, which could also be, tofu is so much like chicken because any flavor you give it, it takes it on. It could be savory and it could be sweet. Um, so chicken wouldn't really be sweet, but tofu can be sweet or savory. So today I'm taking tofu I'm going to make a sweet recipe because I have a sweet tooth and I didn't want to turn on my stove today. And I just love this dish because the sweet tooth is prominent in my, in my mouth. And I know many people out there are prominently kind of drawn to, to sweetness and chocolate. So let me get started and show you this. Well, I'm first of all, you're a chocolate Well, this won't be good for you then, Alan. You'll love this. I'm going to take a container of tofu. This one that I get, I don't know if you could see, it's got two parts. I get this at Trader Joe's, no um, advertising for them, but I love it because it's sprouted, which means it's more nutritious. And also there's two sections. And I'm just using one section to give me four servings. So I opened it up, there's a lot of water in there. So you wanna make sure that you have your um, strainer there. So I put the big blob of tofu in there over a bowl, which will release all the water on this tofu chocolate peanut butter pudding. I didn't say the name, but that's what it is. It's kind of a mouthful. I'm gonna rinse off my hands again. Like uh, Jessica said, I'm out of the frame right now, excuse me, but Jessica was saying, always work with clean hands and that is important. Okay, so here's the tofu and I'm going to, I have a food processor here in front of me. I'm just going to slice it. It's very easy to slice. This is the extra firm. I seem always to get the extra firm, even though I could have used what's called the silken tofu for this recipe. It works just as well with the, um, the one that's extra firm. I put that in my food processor. Alan, you have a question? Uh, no, I was just, uh, I, I didn't realize there were different textures of tofu. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The silken is used for more like puddings, but this is delicious because it makes it a lot thicker. And then you have firm and you have extra firm. It's kind of like before and after the gym, the gym. you kind of, you know, firm and then you're extra firm. Afterwards. Yes. Always make sure how you work out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So always make sure your tofu is organic. That's important. So I'm going to put that in the food processor. It's like a block, probably the width of a deck of cards and a little bit longer than deck of cards. And it's very high in protein. That's how we get a lot of our protein as vegans. We get it through this, we get it through beans and we get it through vegetables. And I've been a vegan for 
oh, I think it's been about eight years now. And my health, thank God, knock on wood, <laughs> knock on my head, is very good. Uh, my cholesterol is low, as I am a firm believer. I'm firm. I'm a firm believer because I eat extra firm. No, just kidding. But I'm a firm believer that um, I'm from the school of thought that saturated fat causes um, your cholesterol to go up and all your numbers to be out of whack. And it also takes havoc on diabetes. From what I read, this is not me speaking, it's Dr. Joel Furman speaking, Dr. Neil Barnard speaking, that you got to get the fat out of your cells because when there's fat in your cells, the, the sugar can't get in there to get into your muscles. So it just causes havoc, makes your A1C go up. So that's my school of thought. Some people believe differently. Okay, so let's get going. Get the tofu in there. Next on our recipe is a quarter cup of cacao powder. I love cacao. Oh, ouch. I hit my elbow on Quarter cup of what? Quarter cup of cacao powder, cocoa powder, but it's called cacao. I'll oh, hold it. Okay. That's organic as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Hershey's powder, but it has just cacao powder from the cacao plant or the, the uh, seed. And it has, in this recipe, it is by eight grams of, pro, of fiber. And you need fiber. We need at least 35 yes. at least minimum per day. So it gives you a lot of fiber and a lot of chocolate flavor. So the quarter cup, I like using, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a quarter cup, like a big spoon rather than a cup. I rather use this because it's easier. You could scoop the cacao into the quarter cup plastic big spoon. I put a quarter cup. Go, oh, wait, you know what? I screwed up. Forgive me. I just put the sugar in first. And that's the same color as the cacao. So let's back, <laughs> let's back track and let you know that I put in a quarter cup, a quarter cup of coconut sugar. And I really packed it in there because when I tasted it, a quarter cup was like, yeah, I could probably use a little more sweetness. So for your personal taste, you'll you'll test it. You might add some more coconut sugar, but you could start out with a quarter cup. Now the cacao powder, I I messed up today. It must be one of those days. Okay, I have got to get my cacao powder. Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay. You know, and that this is what I spend a lot of time doing in my kitchen is looking for stuff. I it wasn't exactly like perfect. Okay. I, 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 there, so I should know where it is. Yeah. And I lost my cacao powder. I thought it was very prepared today. That's very strange. Can you hang on a minute, guys? This is real we life. Are definitely hanging on with everything. I like <laughs> the idea of sweetness and, and the chocolate cocoa flavor. That sounds yeah. really great. Is this going to be some kind of a dessert we can have for the uh, Mexican street corn chicken? Sure, we can have it at the end. That's right. Or if you eat your dessert first, we could do that. I totally lost my. This is ridiculous. I lost oh, that's my. Interesting. I'm always into dessert first too. That yeah. way, there's enough room for it. I'm so like beside myself right now. I don't know where I, I got a new pack and I emptied it into a container and Is I don't know where. Is container by any chance on your table and you've just missed it? Uh, let's see. Oh, here's the cacao. Okay, so we're gonna pretend, all right? <laughs> we're gonna pretend that I put a quarter cup of cacao powder. So you see the the uh, package is cacao, C-A-C-A-O powder, organic. So you dig in there and you do a quarter cup. Right, let's pretend we put a quarter cup of chocolate powder in there. So it's not going to look real chocolatey. Forgive me, it's not going to look real chocolatey, but we're going to make do. All is right. Is that cacao then, powder the same, uh, kind of a white color, a light color? Um, no, it's actually dark. Oh, okay. it's actually very dark and it's strange okay hold on one second oh i found it i found it not too late i hope no not too late because i was just pretending so don't do the, the real thing now because i put it in a different spot and i lost it okay so i don't know can, can you guys see it it's like a chocolatey dark cacao 
chocolate powder. I'll take right. your word for it. Eh, please take my word for it. I crack my finger. The spoon that you're using, that that quarter cup measure, is that something that you can use a knife or something across to make a level? And then I could. Okay. And also, my container has something where you could level it as well. Uh, yes, I've sometimes used the lid of the container, yes. Yeah, and it's very, oh, it smells so good. So I put the quarter cup of cacao, quarter cup of coconut sugar. You could also use maple sugar if you like, or even honey. So just know it's versatile in the sweetener. You could even use something called monk fruit. It's supposed to be super, super healthy for you. Okay, so now we're going, to, that was funny. Well, that's real life, I'll tell you that. Two tablespoons of the... You have to use a plant milk if you're going to keep this vegan. I chose soy, soy milk. I get that at Trader Joe's. All it is is organic soybean. I love this stuff. Okay, so we're going to put two tablespoons of plant milk. Okay, quarter cup and two tablespoons for... So we got a quarter cup. The reason I say quarter cup and two tablespoons is because last time I made it with quarter cup, it was a little, I needed a little more plant milk. Okay, so there's a I quarter. I could use my favorite almond milk for that, couldn't I? You could. You definitely could, more so. I use the soy because I like to get the estrogen, phytoestrogens from this, which help like with. I the taste of the almond milk better than the soy milk. Don't know why, mm -hmm. I just do. That's okay. And here's two tablespoons. So quarter cup and two tablespoons, which is really half of a quarter cup. All right. Let's see here. Okay, so we got the quarter cup cacao powder, quarter cup of the, and two tablespoons of plant milk, and two tablespoons of peanut butter. That's the yummy. Two tablespoons of peanut butter. So it's basically, I mean, Let's go. Creamy or chunky? Either. Either. All right. I could eat either, but this is creamy. Organic, of course, because they spray these peanuts with a lot of pesticides. So I chose not to have that. So here's one tablespoon. Oh, actually, this is a, this cup says, let me look with my magnifier. This says two tablespoons for this little, for this spoon. Two tablespoons makes it easy. Put that in there and use my finger to get it off the spoon. And then you can lick the spoon if you want <laughs> later. We don't do it on the air, but we'll do it. But later. we won't use it again either. No, no double dipping here. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Who can eat peanut butter and jelly every day? I mean, oh, I could eat. I love it. Every day. Isn't that great? Okay. Next we have um okay, that's it. That's all your ingredients. I bet you remember what it is, Alan. Do you remember what we put in here? Uh, let me think. It was a quarter cup of uh, coconut sugar, a quarter cup of cacao, uh, a quarter cup and two tablespoons of uh, plant-based milk, mm -hmm. uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. and uh, the lump of uh, tofu. Yeah, that's it. You got that it. That was it. I don't think you added any salt or pepper or other seasonings, did you? No, I mean, you could add a pinch of salt if you like, but I didn't add it to my last batch and it tasted fine. Try to keep your salt really low because everything has salt in it and you want to have really like a teaspoon of salt a day so you don't raise your blood pressure. Okay, I'm going to turn this on, so cover your ears and taste. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue with a couple optional um, ingredients as well in a moment. Is that running right now? Yeah. It's not making very much noise. I don't know. I think Renee has a special setting that she does on there. Ah, a noise canceling. Love it. Thank you, Renee. Yeah. Is that what it is? Um, okay. No. <laughs> no. You know, I'm looking at this batter. I'm going to call it a batter. It needs a little bit more milk. And you'll be able to tell that even if you can't see, if you run a spatula in it, if it feels kind of thick, a little too thick, you can add just to drop more of, of the plant milk. But that's, you know, that's optional. Maybe you want it thicker. So sometimes I make this and I, I chill it 
or freeze it a little bit and I put in an ice cream cone. So I make a chocolate ice cream. Okay, so next optional ingredients are a teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, well, that sounds good. Yeah, they keep talking about cinnamon, how good it is for your for your body. So I try to put it in a lot of stuff that I can. It actually lowers your blood sugar. Okay, teaspoon of cinnamon, da da da. That's interesting. Cinnamon lowers your blood sugar. I mean, your uh, blood pressure. No, your blood sugar. Your blood sugar. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Okay, then you have a dash. Oh, this is going to be a weird ingredient, but some people like it because I noticed they're selling spicy chocolate now. So this is cayenne pepper, organic. I'm going to put a dash of cayenne pepper in mine because I like my chocolate a little spicy, right? You've seen it in the stores where it says chili, chili chocolate. It's probably an eighth of a teaspoon or less. You got to do it for your personal preference. I had you know. chili chocolate ice cream. Oh, what do you think? Universal Studios about a week ago with my son and my grandson. It oh. was actually pretty good. I enjoy yeah. all that spicy stuff. That's it. I'm going to mix it up again. That's pretty interesting. It only takes just a few seconds to mix it, eh? Probably the longest part of this is opening the tofu and then chilling, chilling the, the pudding so it's nice and cold. And then just mix it a little bit more. I'm going to lick this spoon, then I'll wash it. I want to, I want to taste it. Mmm. Mmm. Good. That's not fair. We should all get a taste. Well, you could vicariously taste it. How about that? <laughs> be nice. Be nice, Alan. Okay, ready? I love that noise filter you have on there, Renee. I can't hear a thing on this end. I do not have a noise filter. <laughs> I think you just have a maybe a sound-free machine or something like that. We don't hear it anyway. I have no idea, but I can't hear your uh, blender. Yeah, me either. It's a good thing. I don't want to be responsible for your hearing loss. Okay. <laughs> we would just start a new show. Exactly. There you go. All right. I'm done mixing it. I'm just right now I'm just scraping off the mixture that I have on my blade here. Don't lick the blade because you'll cut your lip. <laughs> now, I I'm weird about how I present food. I, I think it's real important to present it as pretty as you can. I'm not good at it, but I'm trying to learn. Um, I have a martini glass here. It's small, not a huge one. And I'm going to get at least four servings out of this, which is mil. It's, it's zero. It's, the calories are mil. You could enjoy it because it's not loaded with fat. You might get about three grams of fat in this whole dessert. And then you're gonna have a chocolatey flavor. Oh, and you know what? What you can put on this is endless. You can top this with M&Ms. You could top it with crushed almonds, uh, any other kind of nut that you want. It's amazing. Chocolate chips. Chocolate. I chose chocolate chips because that's what I had today. And then whipped cream would be good too. So I'm going to put some, and I could taste them. I have to do a little taste test here. But we'll put the chocolate chips. And this is so filling that you could even use those little cups that they give you. And if anybody remembers the Seasons 52 desserts, they come in a little, probably a two ounce cup. And you could do that. And you could serve many people with this. Here it is here. It would be beautiful if you put some whipped cream on top. But this looks amazing. It's just very chocolatey. For the chocolate lovers, this is it. This is the best. I'm going to try a bit. Mm. Mm. And how does it taste? I bet that tastes absolutely wonderful. Hold on. I'm savoring it. I'm, <laughs> I'm closing my eyes. You got to close your eyes. It's just creamy. With the now, I could see making a batch of that. And having mm -hmm. one right then and putting the rest in little containers and putting it in my freezer for later. Would that work? 
Um, well, it's bet either if you're going to put it in the freezer, then you should serve it frozen. Because once you thaw it, it's not going to be right. The texture will be, it will have liquid on the sides. It won't, it won't be good. So if you want to do that, just um, serve it from the fridge. Put it in a, a tight container. It'll last a couple of days. Everything's better fresh if you could. It, it will last up to a couple of days in the refrigerator. That's yeah. good to know. And let's look at the pretty glass you could serve it in. Like I said, I know, Alan, you like um, M&Ms in there, or I yes. know you like them. You could put M&Ms on top or, and or nuts and whipped cream, and your guests will enjoy it. So that's about it. It's very simple. But thank you for letting me present that to you today. That sounds absolutely excellent as a little dessert for the the uh, the chicken. Exactly. And that question yeah. regarding the coconut sugar uh but if you didn't have access to finding coconut sugar could you use organic regular white cane sugar absolutely of course of course you can but we always try in nutrition is to elevate our quality of food ingredients that we use it's always the quality that makes for a better meal for a better dish i think and the coconut sugar is low glycemic, right? It retains its, its dark color. Um, it's not white, it's not bleached. And that's why I use coconut sugar. I mean, I'm gonna make this into a pie for my granddaughter's first birthday. I was asked to do that for my, by my daughter-in-law and I'm gonna put it in a graham cracker cut crust. I'm not gonna use sugar at all. I might either use maple syrup right from the tree, organic, expensive as all, but doesn't matter, or, you could even use date syrup. They sell date syrup already made, or you could take your own dates and grind them up, use water and make it into a paste and add it to the mixture. And this will go great in a, in a pie crust. So then you have the added sweetness of the graham cracker pie crust. So yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good um, question, Jessica. Thank you for bringing, them up, bringing it up. I'm just so focused sometimes on my ingredients that you know, there's definitely alternatives for everything. So thank you. That that has about the texture of soft serve ice cream, doesn't it? It does. It does. You know, I never thought of it that way. If you really chill it, you can it would you taste put it in a cone and eat it out of a cone. I have. I have. Because I love the cone where the cone meets the, the mixture or the ice cream. I call it ice yes, cream. I call it nice crazy. ice cream. Nice cream. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. Yes. Can't wait. No, I wonder to... if there's any members of our audience today that have any questions for you about your chocolate, coconut, tofu, peanut butter. butter. <laughs> you can leave the peanut butter out if you want. Yeah. Okay. Or about the uh, Mexican corn chicken. Wait a minute. Am I doing that right, Jessica? Uh, Mexican street corn chicken, yeah. Corn chicken. Are there any questions from our audience about either of these? Well, it looks like we don't have any questions. Um, don't, don't be shy. Yes, please. I know that our recipe is going to be in there on online someplace or other. So, Annette. Yes, sir. Let me put my glasses back on. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed today's today's session so much. And, you know, before we actually leave this, we want to uh, let you know about our website where you could donate. And the link's right at the top of the page. So get ready to put this into your uh, Alexa or somewhere. The, the address is cookingwithoutlooking.tv. Um, God, I'm having a tough time today. Forgive me. I've got a, a Don't I get worry. These, Here it goes. Can I do that for oh, you, Annette? <laughs> I get these terrible migraines behind my just my left eye, and I'm I want to go to the doctors to figure out what's going on, but um I'm having a hard time with this. Yeah, Alan, go ahead and give the website where they can donate. It's www.cookingwithoutlookingtv dot wordpress dot com and right thanks 
donation okay. link. I'll let you continue on from there. Okay, well, you can donate there at the website and have a chance to win one of our Cooking Without Looking aprons. Alan, can you can you model that for us right now? I certainly can. Let's see, am yeah. I all in there? Yeah, looks like it. I see white. And if you notice, I'm still wearing that same blue shirt, the, the one that I was wearing in probably one of the very first shows. Yeah, that's okay. That's your that's your costume, so to speak, or your uniform. I I'll wash it one day. What do you think? Yeah. It's I am honor. joking. I'm only joking. Actually, it's not the same shirt. I've had about three or four of them. But the blue seemed to work out well because of the, the pictures and all that. I don't know. Yeah, and plus your eyes. You forgot your eyes are blue. I, sure they do have blue eyes. I, forgot. I don't have any color perception. Uh, I have to write a little note on all my clothes as to what color they are generally. Oh, my. Anyways, oh. it's not a big deal. I would thank like to say thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. Jessica Clay and Brian, you helped out too. And thank all of you in our audience for joining us on the Cooking Without Looking TV show weekend edition. If you would like today's recipes, as well as past recipes, please go, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Please go to our website at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Alan. Also, I, I wanted to mention about the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is great because you can get past recipes. You can even replay this if you dare <laughs> to get Jessica's recipe. I don't know about mine. I kind of screwed it up today, but I hope you forgive me. Um, just go to the YouTube channel to get that. Um, also, there's many schools, like over 73 countries, that use our shows to teach their students. Right, Alan? That's absolutely right. Uh, I believe it's something like 90 different countries it's been viewed in, and they use any, uh, you're most welcome to use any part of our show for free for your students at, at free at no charge. I'm trying to read this backwards, but yes, you're absolutely right, Annette. Yeah, also finally to mention is that you can make a donation at Vision World Foundation, um, also on our website as well. And because we want to change the way we see blindness. And that's so important to change the way we see blindness. You can also call, I know personally you can talk to Renee at 305-200-1904. And she'll be glad to speak to you about any, any questions or any comments that you might have. And as well as taking a donation for the Cooking Without Looking Show. 9104. 305-200-9104. Yeah, 9104. Okay. All right. And, um, and what else? And that viewers can also check us out on our Cooking Without Looking podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, or anywhere they get their favorite podcasts. We're also available on Alexa enabled devices and Victor Reader. Wow. That's awesome. That's amazing. So, Anyway, we're going to have another show in May. Please join us. And on behalf of myself, Alan, Renee, and anybody, any contributors or donate, people who have donated to our show, we want to say thank you for joining us and bye for now. Bye. Bye.